Recording. I have any emails? No, I'm good. All right, well, I guess I'll just do it now and then. Um, so here's the grade calculations, I believe. Um, there is the attendance, which I don't really worry about at this moment, um, which is 15%. Uh, the lectures are 15%. The homework is 20%. Tests are 40%. And the final is 10%. Um, I'll may rework this later and, and change, take this 15% and distribute it, uh, not this semester, but in future semesters. And then I'll worry about um, attendance and classwork and I'll put it into other things, um, probably tests and homework. Um, so in future things, this might be uh, four tests, if I had another 10%, uh, Try to make it easily easily masked. Um, because nothing really comes out nicely with all these odd numbers. But that's what it is. Because uh, somebody was like, well, I have 105 out of 106 points. But um, like they're not factored in evenly. So um, that's why that happens. Um, today is, we're talking about chapter 6, which yes. is formal distribution. Um, yes, now, I want to ask something. Yes. Um, is that the grading system, the grading pattern? Yes. So like the final grade is based off of this. Um, okay. And if you like, and homework is, remember, is A, B, and F. Uh, this is 80 to um, 100. Sorry, 85 to 100. This is 70 to 85, and this is below 70. So those are the three homework grades that you get. Um, and this comes out to like a 95, I think it is, or something like that. But if it's above that, I usually give you the, the points uh, for it. Um, but B, I just give you a B. And F, um, I'll, I will usually go and give you the points for that. Um, but as well, but that's kind of where they are. So those are the grading system. Okay. Uh, so like the uh, homework, um, I want to know how many times like you have to submit, uh, like when you submit like your homework. So like, um, on the homework, if I go in as a student, uh, student view. And let's just say I'm doing chapter six. Um, yeah. As it goes along, this is worth seven points. And so it just kind of, I look at um, all the previous, like the past homeworks. So the, right now the homework grade was based on chapters one, two, and three. Um, and just, I just look at the percentage that you have done, what it says for points. And I then look at that and, and give it. So, um, you know, so like, this may have a couple of parts to it and stuff, um, but there, you know, it, it, that's what the homework gets based off of. And so I just look at um, uh, score view. Let me go to past assignments. Actually, I'm going to go to a past course that way you can see. Um, Uh, 
And now I'll do a. Oh, this is not request. Score view. And I'll look at past assignments. And I need past students. And then it gives me the percentages. And so I then look and go, okay, well, here's the percentage you got, and I base it off of that. Okay, so like I I, I submit I submit uh, um I submitted my chapter one. My yeah. name is there, but like I'm not seeing like um there's another part where you check for like the chapter you submitted. I didn't see oh. it's registered yet, but I do submit it. You know, I don't Yeah, I don't know it. how it like, see, I don't know what it looks like on your end, like in the grades. So uh, let me see if I can see what that looks like in the, the grade section, uh, grades. Um, or maybe my assignments. Yeah, so I mean, here you should see your scores. Like you should have a number off out of you know so many things, and so like past assignments you'll see so many points out of nine. So if you go to past assignments you'll see so many points out of nine point one three, so many points out of fourteen. You'll see your score there, and then it turns that into a des it turns that into a percent. Okay. 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 So, so how that's, about the, that's, the the notes? The notes like when you submit notes. Yeah. Um, you will, they're either split or they're not. Like, yeah, so I, when I when I go here, post lecture notes, I can look at them. Here, I'll go to chapter six, and I can see whose names are, and I'll just give you credit. Like, I'll read yeah. through them, and yeah, then... Like, yeah, yeah, good. And so it just says, oh, give, you know, like when I go to, I have a thing that says grade, you know, things that need grade to be graded. So I'll just show you what it looks like online. So need grading. And I can see, oh, here's the stuff that needs to be graded. And here you are. And I'll read it and go, oh, here's the notes. Yep, those are notes. Any questions? Doesn't seem like there's any questions that I have to worry about answering. And done. <laughs> That's it. And so then you'll then it will go right into the grade book. So which you will again I can't see as a student, but you have a grades button somewhere, my grades, and and if you clicked on that you can see that I've done stuff. And if there's something that's amiss, you can just let me know and I'll be like because sometimes I put the wrong you know thing in the wrong grade, which is un, unheard of because like um, there was a student who dropped, but is in um, WebAssign. So I may have put her grade in, in somebody's name and then everybody gets shifted down one. And then I realize I'm, I have an extra person. So then I have to go back and figure out where the mistake was. It, it's not uncommon for me to mess something up in the grades because um, I have to input them manually. Um, so if I do that, just say, oh, by the way, um, uh, my grades are wrong. I should have this and I'll look at it and go, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it's wrong. I like this part, I, I'll, I'll fix that. Or if I graded you know, your um notes as a zero and you then did them it doesn't let me know necessarily that you've done them so i'll just say oh send me an email by the way i, I did great i did notes on chapters three and four um i had zeros can you please look at them and i'll look at them and change the grade so yes um, yes so once more how to access the grades once more how to access the grades so to, to great access the grades in blackboard it's right here where it says my grades okay see if i click on it it says I don't have any grades. Um, weird. Um, it used to not give me any access to anything, so I don't know what uh, what this is. Um, but like you can see your your grades here, like the values um, of stuff. For like I said, for um, WebAssign, you can see the scores right here. Like if you go to um, on your assignments, if you look at past assignments. 
it'll show you the grade of them out of you know how many points there are and you can add that up and just divide and you can find out your what you should have so this is 1832.13 so let's say you had a 30 out of 32.13 you'd be like okay well i got you know 30 divided by 32.1 oops 13 i have a 93 so i have an a that's it you know if it was a Twenty, you'd be like, "Oh, I have a 62." Well, that's an F. So that's how I look at it. I don't. I'll see it. Point. I'll see 62 percent. I'm like, "Okay, that's an F," um, and that that's all I do. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So if you see something, you know, but like I said, if something doesn't look right, just let me know, and I will go in. Or, or if you've done something afterwards, let me know, and I will um, fix it. Um, will uh, this was for you because you asked about the grading. I did send you an email, but here it is here. It's not everything isn't equally balanced. So that's why like you can't just go and go, oh, I have this many points out of this many points and I should get this. It doesn't work because like some things are worth more than other things. Yeah, thank I had, saw, I had seen the email. Thank you. Okay. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure I, I mentioned that because um, I don't even know if like you know, when people look at their emails. So. Um, so that's kind of all I've talked about so far is just the grading. Um, so you want to know where you saw the grade. So if you're in WebAssign, you can look at your past assignments. And this is where I get those grades from. I just look at, I have a list and it does, I go to past assignments and I, it gives me a percentage and I just put that in as, as the thing. Um, the same for the tests. Um, for the, and if you, need to find your grades and you're curious it's right here the my grades button um if something looks wrong like i put in a zero for something that you like on notes that you did or you forgot to do them and you did them late just let me know i mean i will i do go and update them but like if you're like oh i really want to see how i'm doing it like i have like all these zeros and it's freaking me out uh and i i know i want to get it i did them and you know and I, because I usually do them like right around test time, but I was just happened to be in looking at my mail. So I was like, oh, let me just do this. Um, so, but if you're like oh, freaking out, just send me an email and say, hey, or like the next class and go, I, I did the the notes, you know, that I missed and I, you know, made up a bunch of the homework. Can you please look at my grade and I'll gladly do it. So it, it takes like four minutes, you know, it, it doesn't take a lot of time. So. I'll just, and I just change it. So, um, but I do want you to, to have that, you know, and always feel free to ask. So, um, so that's that stuff. Um, today we're gonna talk about the normal curve and the normal curve is a distribute is a continuous distribution. So last week we talked about discrete distributions like the binomial and the Poisson and the PDFs. Um, and they had countable things. Uh, now what we're going to be looking at is normal distributions, and they're going to tell you their normal distributions. Um, chapter five talks about other types of continuous dis distributions, which we'll talk about next week, um, but uh, which aren't normal. Um, but this is what a bell curve is. So if any of you have ever taken, um, well, you're all are all of you from Massachusetts. Uh, I you are. So you took the MCAS, right? That's that's a normal distribution they take a test and they give some points and they're like oh this is what you have um because i asked my notes i didn't submit is it too late uh no it's not kyle um so you the, anything that's like any tests like sat tests or mcas or all those those are standardized tests as soon as they say the word standardized test they put them into a normal distribution like this and they go oh well let's break it up into groups and here's one standard deviation and here's two standard deviations and here's three standard deviations and 68% of the data is in here about and 95% of the data is in here just about and 99.7% of the data is in here just about so they can look at it and go well anything over two standard deviations is excellent anything over three standard deviations is outstanding um, uh, anything in one standard deviation you know is you know like is normal you're at the average anything below that you know like so we have 
And then they like, if, or if they talk about grading on the curve, this is a C, this is a D, this is a B, this is an F, this is an A. Um, like you had on your MCAS or whatever, you had your proficients and your needs work. Needs work is this stuff over here. You know, this is proficient. This is like, you know, exceeding proficient. This is, you know, exceptional or whatever the things are. So like they use standard deviations to come up with these rankings and decide who needs help and who, who doesn't, who is like, you know, at the top of the, the, the grade. Um, and that's for everything. And weirdly, we, we use it all the time for lots of stuff. Um, so, but, so it becomes really normal, um, not, not, uh, used a lot. Um, and they call it the normal curve uh, because it's been normalized or standardized um, with a mean of zero. Well, technically there's, it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one uh, because it's based off of tables. Um, but we, and we use a formula to build that don't ask why they, I don't know why the normal distribution is Z. I don't, I mean, you think it'd be N. Um, so it's the, the value minus the mean over the stamp population standard deviation. And so if it's um, an SAT, they can actually have the population standard deviation because they have every test that was taken and they have the population mean because they have every test that was taken at that time and it changes each time the test is taken it's not like they look and go oh over the past it's been this no they look at that test and they look to see how you did compared to everyone who took that specific test you know uh so on that date or that like you know um month or whatever like because maybe it's a week um but like that specific test whatever however you did you're compared to people in that group and they look and go okay well we're gonna and the mean we're gonna make be 500 and we're gonna have the minimum be 200 and we have the maximum be 800 and we're gonna force the numbers to work and they do <laughs> and then they look and compare and tell you how you did compared to everybody else and they can get those percentages um because they have the population most things we don't have the population, you know, mean or the population standard deviation, so we have to like, you know, wing it. But um, everything that they're going to talk about in this chapter is going to have these things because that's all they're talking about is just the normal distribution. We'll talk about other ones later and how we deal with that as it comes up. But for now, all we have is the normal distribution. And um, we can use this formula to find how far away things are from the mean. Remember, we even talked about this in chapter two. We had those, um, you know, drums and pianos and guitars, I think it was. And we looked to see, you know, we, we saw different prices and we were looking to say, well, which one was the best deal? And well, I mean, you know, the cheapest one was actually the worst deal. The cheapest one was, you know, the guitar, but it was the worst deal overall because it was much, you know, it was higher than the mean, whereas the other two were less than the population mean. And like the most expensive one was actually the best deal because it was the furthest from the mean based upon the standard deviations that we had. So that's what we can do with it. We can look, you know, compare things again. And um, so we use this formula to find that stuff. And uh, so here we have recovery time is normally distributed. They're all going to say that they're normally distributed in this, in this uh, chapter because otherwise they can't um, use it because it doesn't work if it's not normally distributed. Um, yeah. And so, all right, yeah, that's better. So the mean is 5.1 days. The standard deviation is 1.7 days. And Oh, this is an, a simple one. There's no math actually involved. They're asking you, what is the median time? Because it's normally distributed, that means it's symmetric, which means the mean, median, and mode are all the same. So for something to be normally distributed, the mean, median, and mode have to be the same number because it has to have that kind of a curve where this is the highest point and it's the mean. 
So um, because it's the and because it's also normally distributed, half of the values are below the mean, half of the values are above the mean. That means it's also the median. So we don't have to do any work. We just have to know what it means to be normally distributed and that mean and median are the same. The next one asks us to do a little work. Um, the same type of problem, except they've changed the numbers now. So we have 7.9 days. We have the standard deviation is 1.3 days. And we want to know if somebody takes 10 days to recover. That was annoying. Where did my mouse go? I hate when stupid things happen. I close that. That's going to be bad. Um, back my mouse. All right, that's going to be annoying me all night long. Yep, that's going to annoy me all night long. And if I close this, I get logged out of the thing. So all right. Well anyway, uh, so we just go to the calculator and, and ask it to do the math. And remember because this is in um, a fraction, we need to make sure that that part is in parentheses. So parentheses 10 minus 7 Point nine, close parentheses, divided by 1.3, or you could do it in parts. Either one is fine. Um, and this gives us a value of 1.62 because they want two dec decimal places above the mean, which means that this is 1.6 standard deviation, 0.62 standard deviations above the mean. And now we can compare that to you know eight days and see how far away that is from the mean um, and get a better idea if the, as this is normalized, um, where things go. Okay. Why? Why, 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 why? I'm trying to think, how do I get the mouse showing again? How did I get rid of it? It was the weird thing. All right, I want to shut this and I'll be right. Uh, hope he comes back.
hope so. Hope he comes back. Uh, I'm actually pretty good at statistics if you guys want me to cover for them. I don't have a problem with you covering for him, like, but I don't know if he's okay with that. No, I'm he totally getting him terrible at statistics. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know statistics, like... I don't know, like, if the, um, the lecturer, the instructor is okay with that. I don't know.
Uh, you're on mute, Professor. Okay, Professor. <laughs> now, well, now the camera's not going to work because I crashed the system when I went to go uh, jump out quickly. So um, if they don't give you this and they give you instead, you know, this number, um, you know, uh, 2.1, you then have to just use math algebra to solve to find out what the x would be and that'll happen um if they say below the curve below then it's gonna be a negative 2.1 so those are only those are the things you need to be able to remember how to do um and solve some algebra to be able to get get that so yeah I, um, unfortunately my camera won't work now because i jumped out um of the window but i have a cursor again so that makes me happy hmm. Um, now here, this one here, we don't necessarily have to, um, do, we actually don't have to do any math. And, um, the reason that it's exponential distribution, uh, is because of the fact that the mean and standard deviation are the same. Okay. In that case, means and standard deviations for exponential distributions have to be the same. They can be anything else for any of the other no for any other distribution that there is but uh, means and standard deviations on an exponential distribution are the same number so that's why it cannot be this one okay that, and that's the only answer um but because we didn't talk about uh, exponential and uniform distributions yesterday or uh yet um you wouldn't know that so um, I probably should take this out question out at some point, but since I usually go over these problems anyway, um, then it is easy enough to, for me to give that. I'm not recording, I'm probably, oh no, I am recording, so weird. Okay, um, leaving that one after that. But yeah, so mean and standard deviation have to be, are the same number in exponential distribution. That, that's all you need to know about that. Everything else, the distribution can be bigger than the mean least in normal distributions and in um, uniform distributions, it's weird, but it could be. Um, it can also be the other way around. The mean can be much bigger than the uh, standard deviations on both of those. Um, and that just changes how wide the distributions of those things are. So um, now in this case, they're asking you, is it weird to find um, a value that is one less than one minute in this case and the reason that it's yes is because of this so if i have one minus five divided by two i get negative four over two which is negative two and they said less than one. So that could be any number less than between, you know, zero and one. Um, and anything that's more than two standard deviations away from the mean is very unlikely to happen because remember, 95% uh, of the data is in two standard deviations. So that means only two and a half percent of the data is less than two standard deviations and only 2% two and a half percent of the data is more than two standard deviations away. So anything outside of two standard deviations is really unlikely to occur. Um, tiny, minuscule. So that's why the answer is in this case, yes, that it is weird um, and unlikely for that to happen, for you to find a, a parking space in less than a minute. Yeah. Now we get into some doing some of this stuff. Um, this here is just the thing, I, like I said, she likes to have, the author likes to have a way of writing down information. Uh, so normal distribution, if, because they tell us that it is normally distributed, it follows the normal distribution, which we use as an N. And then we put in the mean here and the standard deviation here. So always put in those things for this type of distribution. Remember last week when we had binomial, we had um, N and P, you know, the number of trials and the uh, probability of success. 
um, we didn't have anything for the Poisson distribution, um, but if we did, it would probably be like P and then the lambda. Um, when next week, when we get into the T distribution, we put in the degrees of freedom, uh, and there's like different things that are going to happen um, throughout uh, the chapters. But it's always going to be this: the X follows some distribution, and usually it's just a letter. We don't spell it out. We only just put a single letter in usually, except for exponential. They put exp. Um, again, don't know why. Um, and then in this case, it's the mean and standard deviation with uniform. We're going to put the lower and upper bounds with uh, exponential. We put in the mean because the mean is used to calculate a whole bunch of stuff. So, um, you know, one over the mean, uh, really M, which is one over the mean. Um, so because of that, it, it's used a lot. So, um, but they have, they each have their own idiosyncrasies of how these things get distributed, how these things get written. It's not a standard that's, you know, has to be done for every problem, but it has to be done for this chapter, for this book. In different books, they're going to use different notations to, to distribute, tell you what the things are. When I was taking stats, we would just put that it was, I would just write down that it's a normal, and I would write the mean and the standard deviation just in a table for myself. Um, some of the useful things to have those numbers because you're going to need those numbers, but um, this is how they do it to make it nice and clean. And then they want to know, well, first off, which graph fits this? So we have um, a mean of 200 feet, standard deviation of 44 feet, and we want to know the probability the ball traveled less than 180 feet. Now, we don't deal with less than or equal to anymore, or greater than or equal to anymore, or at most or at least, because less than 180 and at most 180 are the same thing. Because the smallest number, the biggest number smaller than 180 is 180, uh, which seems like a weird thing to say. But um, because this is continuous, the biggest number smaller than 180 is 179.9999999999. Arvo, when you're done with class, could I just ask you a question? Sure. And so it just keeps going, and so that's why they're the same. Yes. What's the question? Yes. Kyle. 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 You had a question. I don't know. Maybe it's computer or like the internet. Well, he just, yeah, he just said, uh, let me ask you a question. And then, like, I, I think he said he wanted to wait till after class. Oh, after class. Okay, oh, I just yeah. heard I just had a question, so that's why I stopped talking. All right, never mind. I'll get back to you after class. All right, so the graphs here, like I said from last week, they're really bad at making uh, multiple choice graphs. So if I want something that's less than 180 feet, well, that's not less than 180 feet, and that's not less than 180 feet. So those two are already out of the question. This one here shades at 200 feet, and this one here shades at something that's less than 200 feet. So it can only be this answer here. Um, there is no other choices that even possibly make sense. Um, if I was making a multiple choice graph, they all would have at least been shaded on this side. Um, and... and um, uh, you know, then we would have looked at that, but and had to figure out the points in between here. But since these two make no sense, so always look to see which things you can get rid of. Now, to find this um, probability, we use the calculator. Um, because, I mean, technically we could use a table, but we don't use tables anymore um, because they were broken up and you had to do interpolation and all this stuff. So this is far more accurate. Um, and to get them, we're, again, we're going to go to the distribution uh, part. So second distribution. And we are only going to be concerned with the normal CDF or the inverse normal on for this chapter. We don't notice there is still a PDF, but that tells us we're asking for an exact point. And we don't ever deal with exact points in the normal distribution because um, they are just looking at a single tiny line and the probability of getting a single exact value uh, on an infinite number of options is really tiny. 
you know. Um, so because we can never get something that's exactly 180 feet because those measurements aren't perfect. So the fact that, you know, is it really 180 feet? Is it really 179 feet, 11 and, you know, 31, 30 seconds, you know, inches? Or is it 180 and 1 64th of an inch? You know, we have various ranges. So like exact measurements exist. And so we'll never get exactly 180 feet. It doesn't happen. Um, even when they measure stuff, there's really like gray area, you know, your parts of parts and parts and parts of an inch, you know, over or under on, on everything. So technically, so even though we have a ruler that's a foot long, it really isn't a foot long. It's probably a little bit over. And um, the measurements, even like the lines on the thing have thickness. So they don't really necessarily actually measure that distance. They measure a range of values in that that we assimilate to that d distance. So, um, so to find this, the probability that something is fewer than 180 feet, we're going to use CDF. So because this is a normal distribution, we're going to go to normal CDF, and it's going to ask us the lower bound, and it already puts the, that value in. This number is technically infinity. It's the smallest number you can put in. Uh, where this is a negative one with 99 zeros behind it. That's as far away as we can get. And the biggest number we're going to have is a positive one with 99 zeros with it. And so to get this E here, I clear this out. I'm going to do negative 1. And to get that E, it's the second comma button. And then 99. And always use that value because um, rounding can occur. So even though we can't get negative feet, negative distance, it makes no sense. Um, there may, the numbers may be, you know, there may be enough space in there. If you put zero that it, it throws it off. Um, if the number is close enough to zero or the standard deviation is big enough, um, you know, that you could technically have values that would be negative in, um, the range. So I mean, we won't hear because it goes to 44 feet. And three standard deviations is um, 130 feet, so it's never, it's not going to be negative, but it's possible. So our upper bound is whatever because this is less than, so it's just that number, 180. And then our mean, we put in our mean from our value and our standard deviation from the thing, and then we hit paste. And if we had an old calculator, you'd have to put all the commas in, but nobody has one, or at least nobody uh, said they did from uh, last week. So because of this, we just hit enter, and it gives us that number. So there's nothing that we have to worry about looking up. Like I said, and we would have we'd find between you know one uh, you know three point two one uh standard deviation z is 3.21 and 3.22 and we'd have to figure out the, what value how far this is in relation to that and we would get decimal values we would do what they call interpolation and so it's not worth all the work so we use the calculator it does it much faster and then here if we want to find the percentile that's when we use the inverse norm so second distributions, inverse norm, we put in our area, which is the percentile, so 0.80, because it has to be a decimal between 0 and 1, and again with our mean of 244. We paste, and that's going to give us our value. And they want one decimal place, so 237.0. So that, those are how they find those things. And anytime they ask for that, that's what they're going to do. Then it asks us to make a graph. Well, again, we have to figure out what 237 is. Um, I have no idea what's graphed even on this. Like, I don't even see shaded area on that. I see everything is shaded on this one. So, um, neither one yes, of those. Sir, I, I want to make a request, please. Yes. Um, can I please leave at seven? Oh sure, you can. You can. You don't ever. You never, never have to stay the whole class. If you have stuff to do, feel free to leave. It's being recorded, so I'll, you know, feel free to come back and look anytime you want. All right, thank you. Okay.
yeah, I never tell people that they have to stay because like, especially when crazy things like this happen and I have to like spend a few minutes like fixing my computer. Um, no, always feel free that you can, you know, pop in or out. So if people show up late, I'm fine with that. If they show up, uh, if you have to leave, I'm okay with that as well. So um, because this says the 80th percentile, that means 80% of the data is below that number. Well, this is the value that has it above that number. And that's only going to be 20%. And this is the value that has 80% below it. So uh, as we can see, this number here is shaded. We can tell it's at least 50% is here, is at the mean. And then we have some space above it. We don't know if it's exactly 80%, but we can look and go, well, 237. That's 220, 240. Well, it's a little less than 240. So yeah, that's probably where 237 is. And they drew a line and then they colored it in. So that's how they got those values. Um, and then what is the probability? Well, the probability that X is less than K, well, whatever K is, K is the, the distance that you hit. Because they tell us that it's 80th percentile, that's where the 80.80 80 comes from. Um, so I, I totally missed the part where you would like, not, you don't have to do the whole problem set over again, obviously I can just rewatch it, but, um, I downloaded like a free app for the calculator, um, to okay. my phone because the MacBook wouldn't run the calculator app that you had given us. Um, of course. And, <laughs> and, um, I'm trying to, what, what, what did you, uh, like, so, uh, second, second distribution. Okay. I gotcha. And then inverse norm. I don't pull up. I almost want to make motion up, but I'm not. So they may call it something different. Uh, they hopefully they don't. Um, that, that's the problem with, with um, you know, stuff is that things get outdated. Technology is, is a funny thing, things get outdated so fast that um, you, know, you can never find things. Um, Numworks is another tool that I, I recommend just because I like the calculator. And they have an online, this is, it's an actual calculator and then they have an emulator for the actual calculator, which is kind of funny. Um, and so if I come in here, I think if I go to, I guess it's inference. Probability. And then I go down to normal. Mean standard deviation, that's not the one I want. Um, they have inverse normal. They, yeah, see, they don't have all necessarily all the things, which is a um, problem. So this doesn't have the inverse, as far as I know. I don't think it does. Because that's stats, so it's putting numbers in. Um, Yeah, unfortunately, this doesn't look like it has inverse normal, which is dumb. So I'm going to give them, I'm going to, oh, well, actually, hold on. Uh, 244. And then probability of X. Can I do? do that can I, I doesn't look like hold on oh yes oh nice so this has the inverse normal uh, tool it, you just have to kind of figure it out. I've never played with it so you can actually just type in the value here and it will give you the number as well as the graph so kind of a okay. cool thing um, so feel free to use this because it's free um, the calculator is like a hundred bucks which to me is a really good thing and it's updatable and it has like program like you can actually program python on this which is kind of a crazy thing um but so you just kind of have, like there's no manual for it so you're gonna have to play around with stuff Got it. but it does have all the little pieces that we kind of need so um, okay so it's a it's a it's a does it, it didn't have t hold on oh it actually has between and greater than as well so um 
So if I needed to find something between, I could have two values. You know, uh, um, one two seventy five, I guess, and three hundred, and it would find you know the probability of that happening. Um, but that's not really what I was looking for. Um, inference. How do I go? I need to get back. Oh, return. Yeah. Oh, well, does it have a T? Yeah, it has student T as well. OK. So I mean, it has a lot of the stuff that we would use. So I mean, at least I know that works. So, um, and it's kind of cool that it gives the graph. So maybe I'll have to start using this as a, as a tool and, and you know, not use the TA83 anymore. I can teach people this. Um, so number six here. Uh, I always think this is funny. Um, they talk about how um, we bend over backwards for certain countries, and this is the certain country that we bend over backwards for. When this book came out in print, it said China. <laughs> now it doesn't. Um, when when uh, when Pearson bought the thing, they changed it from China to a certain country because they wanted people in a certain country to use their tool so they changed you can never say things bad about china uh and, and have them use your product so they took it out because it made china look bad um that they were leaving four-year-olds alone for um long periods of time in the houses in um rural areas which i mean i don't really know why that would be a problem and how that's really derogatory towards china but they didn't like it so they changed it <laughs> Like, I'm surprised they didn't put a different country at that point, but, um, or just say, you know, Nebraska, because, you know, what, we could make fun of Nebraska, but, and there's lots of rural area, but it was really funny that, to me that they took it, China out and changed it to a certain country. Um, so here we have- Taking low blows at China. Nebraska. What? So you're taking low, low blows at Nebraska. I take low blows. Low blows. Nebraska is not usually. I usually go with uh, Louisiana or uh, um, Kentucky. You know, I, I take make fun of most of the states. Um, but I yeah, I just think it's really funny that they changed it from China. Which so I always make sure I point out that the fact that this used to actually say China, <laughs> which because otherwise I would skip over. But once I saw that, I was like, I never said that before. Because uh, in my book, in in the the first edition that I have, it actually says China. Um, so they're in they're left alone for three hours a day um and they tell at some point they tell you that it's uh, normally distributed right here and that there's a standard deviation of 1.8 hours so then they want to know some stuff well what does x mean in this formula here x in this case is how many hours an individual child stays alone that's it you know, every house is different and they want to know X is going to change at from house to house. So that's what that is, is how many times, how long a four year old stays alone at a specific house in rural China. And then they ask the distribution. Well, again, it's normal. We have our mean, we have our standard deviation. Then they start asking us to graph stuff. Okay, and find the probability that a child spends less than one hour a day unsupervised. Well, if I'm gonna go back to this. I'll make it full screen. All right, and my mean is one, uh, is three, and my standard deviation is 1.8. And then I wanna find the probability that it's less than one. So the, the, the probability that a child is left alone for less than an hour is this, is all that we're asking to be found. I don't have to put in any you know, you know means, I don't have to put anything in. If I'm doing it in the calculator, again, it's gonna be normal CDF. Again, I'm just gonna leave this here, put in my upper bound of one, which is what I did on that other calculator the mean of three and the standard deviation 1.8. I hit paste, 
and then hit enter. And again, it gives me the same values. So I'm going to get the same numbers. Now, obviously, here I have fewer decimal places. Um, this only goes to four, seven number, eight numbers. You know, whereas this one will go to um, there's seven, eight, nine, ten, ten values. So this is going to be more accurate. But I mean, it's you know a few decimal places in the you know tens of millions. It's really not that big a deal. Um, the graph, well, I can see what the graph looks like right here. I can see that it, it here's one, here's my mean, and I can see that, that that's what the graph should look like. And I can see that, yeah, that matches that. This obviously doesn't, this doesn't, because these are between values. So that makes no, those make no sense. This is uh, greater than, so that doesn't make any sense. So like I said, they're really bad at graphs. What percent spend over 10 hours? Well, again, I can come back to this one here. And if I hit enter, I'm going to do over. And I'm going to type in 10. And I get this, 5.035 e to the negative 5. This means times 10 to the negative 5th power. It means I have to move this decimal point five places, one, two, three, four, five, add some zeros. So I get 0 0.00005. And you can see that there's no chance of that happening. Like there's nothing shaded here. On this calculator, we have the same thing. I'm gonna to go to normal CDF. Actually, I'll leave it here. Uh, now, in this case, my lower value is 10, and my upper value is 1, second comma, e to the 99th power. Those same values, and I hit paste, and I get the same number. You know, so remember, I just have to move this that many places that direction. And here they ask us to turn it into a percentage because... It's such a tiny number. So I had uh, 0 0.5 e to the negative 5, which means I have to move this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I put a 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I ask, then it asks me to um, 1, 2, 3, and then it asks me to turn it into a, a, a percent, which means I have to move the decimal point back two more places and add a percent sign. So that's where they get the 0 0.0005 for um, the value because they turned it into a percent as opposed to leaving it as a decimal. I, I don't know. Um, I think because they like the four decimal places and we had six things and they wanted you to realize, oh, I have an E to a negative value. I have to move my decimal place and then I have to turn it back so I can get decimals. So, um, and then 90% of the student, of the children spend at least how long a day unsupervised? So in that case there, When they say at least, they mean greater than or equal to. So this is what we're looking for. Okay, our calculator only gives us this value. <laughs> so we have to look up 10%. I'm guessing this may be able to do um, um, Yes. So in this one, I don't have to do the work. I can find out because at least 90% means it's going to be greater than, so they're going to shade the greater than value. Whereas on our calculator, we have to find an inverse normal. It only does less than. So if I did 0.90 here with a 3 and a 1.8, 
I'm going to get five. And the reason it's different is because this is saying 90% of the values are less than something. And that's not what we want. We want to find 90% of the values are greater than something. So we have to put in one minus that, which is going to be 10%. And that's how we get that value. Okay. Um, so that's the one big thing difference between uh, with the calculators. If you are doing inverse norm and they have at least, if they say at least, you have to find the less than part because they're asking you for the greater than value. So, um, but if you're using other calculators and newer versions of the TI-383 have the ability to um, find greater than. They also have the ability to find between which this does as well. But like, like here, I, I don't know if I could put in, yeah, I can, but it's, it's going to find the middle value of that. So it'll find the in middle, it'll it'll look at this is my my mean of three, my standard deviations. Ninety percent of the, the data is between these two numbers. Um, I mean, realistically, ninety percent could be anywhere and anywhere, but the middle ninety percent it's going to come up with. So, um, if you do the between on this, it's going to give you the middle value. So, and we can see that. And here, let me go back. Oops, wrong way. Um, so notice it's not exactly one standard deviation is between 90%. You know, it's pretty close, but it's not exactly one. And 92 and 95 percent, two standard deviations again, not exactly that. And 0.997 is not exactly three standard deviations. They're pretty close, but they're not exact. So they're they're pretty close estimates of those things. Um, the length of time it takes. Oh, this is the last one. Um, this is just like this problem here. 80% <laughs> of the time it takes more than how many minutes? So this is again, at least problem. So again, we have to find what value is going to be to the other side of that. And um, here I can do this one and I can have 0.8. Oops, and I need to go back to And I would get this value here as 1.48. So, oh, I was looking at the wrong problem. Four and two helps to have the right things. Yeah. So that's how they got that problem, that answer. Again, if I did it on the calculator, I have to do the inverse norm but I have to make sure I put in the 0.20 for that because I have to subtract it from the 100%. So, um, wow, we're actually done at seven o'clock. So Sayu, you, 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 perfect timing. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, I will okay. see you next week. Okay. Um, if you have questions, feel free to send me an email. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about Chapter 7 on uh, Tuesday. And don't forget, the test is due um, here on Sunday night. All right. OK, no problem. All right? OK, so thank you. So the test is on Chapters 2, 3, and 4. OK, thank you. OK? OK, 2, 3, so and 4, right? Weekend. What was that? 2, 3, and 4. 2, 3, and 4. Two, three, and four.
All right, thank yeah. you. Okay. So, so how the test is gonna look like? Like, what's um, gonna look like? I'll show you. This. It looks like this. So there's 25 questions. Each one's worth a point. Some of them have multiple points, multiple parts. Some of them don't. This is not like there's like many, many, many variations of this because it's all taken from a, a, a pool. So I have no problem showing you the questions because the likelihood of you getting this problem or you know, this exact test are zero. Um, you may get a couple of problems, but I'm scanning through it pretty quickly. So, um, but that's what it looks like. So, like, are we are we are we gonna take it um to Zoom time? Nope, nope. You can take it. Just you just take it on your own whenever you want. Uh, you could, like I said, I had it open. It, it's open the first day. Test two is also open. So, if you're like, oh, I understand chapter six, and I want to, you want to take the questions on chapter six, and then next week take the set. And, you know, I'm like, and then Tuesday I'll I'll go over chapter seven, and you want to take it ahead. You have until that day. It's open. The first day of class, everyone, every assignment is open. Okay. Yeah. okay, so like, for example, you're trying to say like, now if I want to start taking them, like I can start taking Yeah, the test you can, thing. if you're like, oh, I'm done this and I kind of, I'm going to be, I have some stuff that I'm going to do, you know, uh, during, uh, you know, a couple weeks ahead. And you're like, I, I want to work on chapter 10 because I know I'm not going to be here that day, then go right ahead. I don't, if you do, it won't make sense, but you know, <laughs> Because because these things build on each other, um, eight, okay. nine, and ten all build off of chapter seven, um, but chapter twelve doesn't. Chapter twelve is com a completely standalone item, so okay. um, you could do chapter twelve after you do chapter three, technically. So so what um, so what about like the test? Like if I want to start the test like on my own? Yeah, Saturday. you can start it right now. It, right, there's then. no there's no time limit. You okay. have three chances to answer each question okay that's it so there's no uh, th it's not like oh if you have you know 50 minutes from when you open it no you have until the 19th all right when you thank open you it. good answer yeah. if you take if you take a uh, you know take a test you know, take the question and you're like i didn't get it right you can take it two more answer each question two more times so if you don't get it okay. right, look at other questions, go back to the chapter. I think there's a thing in the book, is there's a link to the book. So like if I went in student view and I hit test one and I go to, you know, problem 10, it, I click on it, it brings me to that section of the book. And I'm okay, like, yeah. oh, I don't remember how to do this. Oh, now I know how to do this. Okay, let me, I'm good. <laughs> And it will, so whatever, so if you're like, you completely forget, it tells you, you know, it, it doesn't tell you what chapter it is. Well, it kind of does. It says right here, two, three. So if you're, that tells you exactly what chat, what section each question is from. You know, problem 24 is from section 4.2. You're like, I don't know how to do that. You click reading and it brings you to 4.2. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right. So yeah, thank that's you. everything. Bye in the test all right you yeah. have a good one yeah right. um will do you have any questions uh no i think i'm good um again i may or may not email you some questions uh as the week progresses and i may or may not answer them how's that <laughs> <laughs> it's more than okay <laughs> understandable um and then i was going to ask uh you said have a good weekend are we not having do we have class on thursday Oh yeah, I, I'm thinking today was Thursday. Okay, all right, cool. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm I'll... just like, I don't know what day it is. Is really <laughs> what the problem? I have no idea what what, what week we're on. Um, I, I'm yes, we have class on Thursday. Okay. I just was thinking today was Thursday. So <laughs> totally fine. Uh, all right, I will see you Thursday then. Again, if anything, I'll probably bring up questions then. All right, and I guess Kyle doesn't have any questions because he left. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I was actually kind of uh, you know excited to hear his question, but okay. Yeah, so I, I don't know. All right, um, I'll say goodbye to everybody, and uh, we'll see you guys on Thursday. And uh, I'll stop the recording, and so you can 